Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be updating you guys with a new 2024 presidential election prediction as of the month of June post-Trump conviction scenario and my thoughts on all of that with some of these swing and battleground states. But before we get started with the map, make sure you guys are subscribed as we are approaching 3,000 and click the bell so I don't miss out on any of my content. Also, if you are interested, we have memberships. You can find a link to that in the description section. Now back to the topic of today's video. We had some developments regarding uh, a Trump uh, guilty verdict and his conviction. So let's begin. Starting off, I honestly think the typical likely states for Donald Trump, though, you know, the conviction would push it further to the right because it would bring enthusiasm among, you know, the Republican base and it will drive more voters to the polls because of the Trump conviction. So with that being said, I think states like Texas, uh, even Florida, Ohio, and Iowa would be considered safe for the former president. He should be able to win them by, you know, over 10 points or double digits by solid margins. And when it comes to the state of Texas, Donald Trump, as of, you know, recent polling, he's up by 11 points in the state of Texas, in which he never got, not in 2016 and in 2020, he never reached double digits in this state. But according to 2024 polls, he is doing exactly that. And a lot of that has to do not only with the conviction, with which would bring enthusiasm, but also the, you know, the border crisis, immigration. We have record numbers of illegals coming into this country illegally. And so with that being said, you know, if voters are impacted by this and, you know, illegal immigration is their number one priority issue, which it is on top of the economy and inflation. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, all of those issues together will go in favor of Donald Trump. And you may make the case that abortion is going to be a, 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 an issue, but it's not the midterms. This is a general election, and in issues like the economy uh, matters more to voters. And as far as Florida goes, Donald Trump is also, you know, substantially leading in this state over Joe Biden. As of June, Trump has an 11-point lead in the state of Florida, just like he does in Texas. A lot of this has to do with the Hispanic, uh, you know, Cuban-American shift towards the right. And they're just trending Republican and Miami-Dade County flipped to DeSantis in 2022 and recently went to Biden in 2020. So Trump can make gains in there, which would, you know, f you know, shift Florida further to the right. And, you know, the Trump conviction would bring enthusiasm among the Republican base. And then I also think Iowa and Ohio are lost causes for the Democratic Party, like any candidate, whether it's Biden or not. I think Iowa and Ohio are solid red for Donald Trump. And Republicans have gained tremendously in terms of new registered voters in the state of Florida and Iowa as well. And then I also think with this, you know, new development with the Trump conviction, as of June with this updated prediction, I think, you know, typically solid blue states for Biden would become, you know, likely they would drop down the margins because she's just so unpopular. As of today, Biden's sitting at a 38% approval rating, according to 538.com. And he's underwater by net negative 18%, making him one of the most, you know, disapproved of unpopular presidents, uh, you know, of modern U.S. history out of any other president. And Biden has a lower approval rating than Donald Trump when Trump was in office. And so I think Washington state would be likely for Biden. I think he'll win it by like 9%. And keep in mind that there was one poll in which it showed Trump winning Washington state, which I don't believe, but it, you know, it gives you a hint that this state could be competitive. And even in New Jersey, I think that would become considered likely for Joe Biden. Trump had a rally and he got like, what, 100,000 people to show up. And I know not all of them were from New Jersey, some were even from Pennsylvania, which would help Trump in the Rust Belt. But still, it goes to show you the support and the enthusiasm on top of a Trump conviction and the issues like the economy, uh, the border crisis and whatnot, it, it all goes in favor of Donald Trump. Polls are showing that New Jersey is going to be decided within five to seven points for Biden, which is not good. And then states like Colorado, such as New Mexico, I think would be likely for Joe Biden at the end of the day. I think both of those states would go to him by roughly seven to ten percentage points, somewhere in between there. I just think even with the you know new development, the Trump guilty verdict conviction, whatever, I still think both Colorado and New Mexico are just too far off for it to be competitive. I think Biden should comfortably win those states in 2024. Democrats have actually gained in terms of registered voters in the state of Colorado. So that state's actually getting bluer than it already pr pretty much is. And as far as New Mexico goes, Albuquerque is a Democratic stronghold. So it's going to be really hard for Trump to make gains in that state. So Biden's pretty much going to do well in both of those states at the end of the day. And now moving on to the lean states for Donald Trump. I think Nevada would be lean if the election was held today in June. I think Arizona would be lean as of today, as well as Georgia. And I also think... Uh, North Carolina would be likely Trump's going to win that by like six points. And recent polling has shown that Trump is very favored 
in this state. And Republicans have made gains in terms of registered voters in both Nevada and North Carolina. So if the election was held today, as of June 1st, according to 538, Donald Trump has roughly a 4.5% lead in the state of Arizona, in which, keep in mind, this state overestimated Biden in 2020. And so with that being said, Trump might even win it by 5 points instead of 45 because they underestimated Trump in the last election. And so a lot of this has to do with the border crisis. Obviously, Arizona is a border state, so they are the most impacted by this more than any other state besides Texas. And so with that being said, I think voters are really pissed off. And if Trump can do well with the neocons, the establishment, you know, the McCain, Mitt Romney type of voters in the Republican Party in this state, I think he can do very well, especially with those independents and undecided voters. And Trump is going to, you know, push out this rhetoric that, you know, he's facing political persecution up until the day of the election. And if that works out, I'm not saying it is, but if it works out, I think Trump's going to win uh, in November. As for Nevada, I think Trump can make gains in Washoe County, I think, in Reno County. If he's able to flip that, he's probably going to win this state. And as for Clark County, he doesn't necessarily have to flip, you know, the Vegas area. But what he can do is make sure that Joe Biden does not hold up to his numbers uh, because Vegas is a stronghold for the Democratic Party, and that's the only reason why Biden won it in 2020. And Biden actually did not improve on Hillary Clinton's margin in this state. And so in a more favorable year in which every other battleground state or swing state, you know, swung to the left, even Georgia uh, and, you know, North Carolina back in 2020, while Nevada still went to Joe Biden by the same amount it went to Hillary Clinton by. And let's see what the polls are saying. If the election was held today, Donald Trump's on the verge of winning Nevada by 5 to 6 percent. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be honest. This state typically overestimates Republican chances. For example, in the 2022 midterms, Adam Laxalt ended up losing, which he was actually supposed to win, according to the poll. So, yes, Nevada typically overestimates Republicans. So, if there was a polling error by like 3%, for example, Trump's still going to win Nevada by a couple points. So it's not going to you know, matter at the end of the day. And in states like Georgia went to Biden, it swung six points to the left back in 2020. A lot of that you know, mainly had to do with African-American turnout. Biden won that significantly, getting nearly uh, you know, eight, 90% of the overall blacks overall vote. Biden surged among them. And I, I don't expect him to get the nearly 90% that he got among them. I think he should drop to 80%. And if Trump's lucky enough, Biden only gets in the 70s among overall black turnout support in this year's election cycle. And Trump's actually polling nearly 20%, which may seem low, but it's actually enough to give him 270 electoral votes if you do this map based off of demographics, which we're not in this video. And now the lean states for Joe Biden, in my opinion, would be Virginia, and that's pretty much it. And also, Maine's outlaws would be lean for Biden. I think uh, if it were to be close, it would probably be because, you know, the third party vote share and uh, independent candidates do uh, good in Maine and RFK is on the ballot. And so with that being said, I think he's on the ballot. And so it, it may take away some support for Biden. And that's the reason why Maine's outlaws would be decided by a lean margin for Joe Biden. Even Susan Collins, who is anti-Trump, had said that, you know, the conviction was flat out wrong, and she's from the state of Maine. So it can actually shift the state more to the right in favor of Trump in 2024. And now, as far as Virginia goes, we all saw that one poll that showed it a dead tie between Trump and Biden, I believe at 42 to 42 percent. And so if that's the case, I mean, the governor here, Glenn Youngkin, endorsed Donald Trump. And so it may be enough to make the state extremely close, maybe decided by one to two percent. But at the end of the day, I still think that Biden is going to come up with the victory in this state by probably like three to five percent, somewhere in between there by a lean margin in 2024. And then as for Minnesota, I think Biden's going to nearly win it by one to two percent. Uh, with the new developments, if the you know Trump conviction does backfire on Biden, as of June, I think Biden's still going to win Minnesota. It's going to be very, very close. I think the suburbs here actually trended towards the left over the last four years, and Minneapolis is really like still liberal. And but Joe Biden does not have that BLM momentum with, with what happened with George Floyd, and it really shifted the Minneapolis suburbs to the left back in 2020. And I think issues like abortion, it would drive voters to the polls. And if Biden were to win re-election, the only reason why would probably be because of women. If Biden gets a lot of, you know, women turnout, it's going to help him 
in the long run. And then as for Wisconsin, some of these uh, Rust Belt states, I think Trump's going to win that by a lean margin in 2024 if the election was held today in the month of June. I think places like Milwaukee, if, you know, Democratic strongholds, if Biden does not hold up to his numbers in 2020, from 2020, I think Trump's on track to win this state. Trump is able to perform very strongly in Green Bay, typically Republican counties. I think he, you know, he can do very well in this state. And it honestly comes down ultimately to those 20,000 voters that Biden won this state by back in 2020. If Trump's able to flip 20,000, then he easily flips this state. And then as for Michigan, I think what happened with the primaries here were pretty interesting because Trump, if you did not know, actually received more votes than Biden did. On top of the 100,000 people that already voted uncommitted in the Democratic primaries. And so considering that Trump was actually facing a real opponent like Nikki Haley and Biden is not because he's an incumbent and Trump still received more votes in the Michigan primaries than Biden did, goes to show you the trends in the shifts will go in favor of Trump in this state. So Trump's going to win Michigan if the election was held in June. I think what's happening with, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I think the Arab population here is very pissed off at Biden, and so it's just going to shift the state to the right. And then as for Pennsylvania, Biden's own home state, if he doesn't win this, it's going to be embarrassing. And if the election was held to today, I honestly think Trump wins Biden's own home state by probably 1%, maybe even less than that. It's going to be really close. I think if Trump's able to flip Erie County, in which he won in 2016, but lost in 2020, I think he's on track to win his state. But I do want to mention that Nikki Haley actually got a lot of that vote share in Erie County, which is not good news for Donald Trump. And then if Biden does not, you know, overperform what the polls are saying in Philadelphia, the Pittsburgh suburbs, because he needs to overperform in there. And if he doesn't, he is not going to hang on to, you know, victory in this state. And it comes down to those blue collar workers, you know, the working class. I think the economy is very important when it comes down to some of these Rust Belt voters. And it comes down to these union workers. And is Biden able to win them or is Trump going to do very well? And if Trump, you know, performs very well among college educated voters, which Biden usually does, which he did back in 2020, I think Trump's on track to win Pennsylvania in 2024. And the last and final state to cover before you end off this video is New Hampshire, in which I think Biden's going to win that by, you know, one to two percent at the end of the day. So basically a tilt to lean margin if the election was held today as of June. I just think that New Hampshire is an, uh, you know, an anti-incumbent state and Joe Biden is the incumbent. And so I just think it's going to go in favor of Donald Trump. It's still, is it going to be enough for Trump to overcome at the end of the day? I just don't think so. And actually, New Hampshire's polling better for Biden than in any other swing state. I mean, Biden's doing better in New Hampshire than he is in Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, according to the polls. So I think this one state is actually a little bit tricky, but I still think Biden's nearly going to hang on to this state in 2024. The election was held in June. I think Donald Trump went to 312 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 226. So let me know your overall thoughts and opinions on this map in the comment section down below, what states you agree with or disagree with. And one last final reminder before I end out this video is to subscribe as we're approaching 3000 and click the bell so you didn't miss out on any of my content. Also, if you are interested, we have memberships. You can find the link to that in the description section. That's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for watching.